All right, good morning or afternoon, whichever it is. YouTube people, I wanted to make another video. Um, had a friend come over and said, hey, let's have some fun. Teach me how to make, you know, wooden signs or how to use that router. And I said, okay. I said, well, did you watch my first video? And he said, yeah, he did. And I said, okay. So, you know, a few of the basics here. Okay. What I have in front of me is he made this piece of wood and we were going to make a sign by carving into this this is not the right way to do this don't do don't finish it then turn around and think you're going to come back and router it and everything is going to be hunky dory in terms of your finish it's going to be crap so why did we cut this up he made the one mistake that a lot of people make is he went out to home depot he bought a piece of wood he brought it home he put a stain on it put a finish on it thought wow this looks great and then I'm going to carve something on it. He did things in reverse, first of all. Second of all, this piece of wood was so warped, it, it's like useless. So we just cut it up. That's why you see it cut up. So we're going to start over. Um, I had him go out. I showed him. Take it off of the rack. Turn it on its edge. Both sides. Look down it. Try to get the straightest piece of wood that you can get. A lot of this wood at the big box stores, they are not straight. They're warped, they're curved, they're split. They got too many knots with cracks and stuff, and you have to stop and think you're going to be using a router on this. So, you know, you don't want to encounter any more problems than you have to. Now, I'll show you how to correct some of the problems and what to do about things as we go. So, first project, I'm going to throw this out. I'm going to set up a new one, and I'll talk to you about it before we start. One moment. We selected this piece of pine nice straight brought it home it's about 11 and a quarter inches wide four feet long but we're not going to use all of that okay so what we did is you can do this with tracing paper now i had a template i made because i made a few of these signs for people with their names on it or just welcome so I thought this would be a good one because he wants one for his house and so I used the stencil but like I said you can use carbon paper and tracing paper you can use that little free program uh, posterize it I'll put it on the caption okay what you're looking at right here is the base of my detail router it's the 611 I have a detail bit in it if you watch the first video I set it to about the height of this wrench about an eighth of an inch that's all the deeper you really need to go don't bury these things real deep into the wood if you want to go deeper make it two passes you know go over it then set the depth gauge which is down here you can make it go a little bit deeper and then router it again but don't try to take off too much with this little tiny narrow bit first reason it's not good for it but uh you'll break this maybe I mean, so this is a quick easy way for me to set it up so I'm going to router around the donkeys in this picture and I'll show you that in just a sec and then we're going to do a lot of this inset meaning we're going to carve into the letters. Outset would be if I went around the outside of the letters the letters are coming up out at you and it's just the way I decided to do the sign. It's the way my friend wanted it. So here we go. I'll show you in just a sec what we're going to do next. Okay turn it on. I've got my speed set up and I'm ready to go. Okay, <clears throat> Okay. now I'm going to go around this whole donkey and do this. Now, if you have a stencil you're using, somebody said, well, what are you using to do the covering? Okay, I use, here we go, Marsh Ink. I buy it off Amazon. You don't need to do this. You can use tracing paper and a pencil, like I said. But somebody asked the question. I just saw it pop up a minute ago. So I'm going to go around this whole donkey, and I'm going to outline everything that I'm doing because it'll make it a little bit easier. I've got a lot of darkness in here and a lot of pencil lines. So what you don't want to do is get ahead of yourself and cut the wrong thing and screw up your signs. So take your time right now. You're not in production. Go slow. It'll come out perfectly fine. Okay, hang on a sec and I'll be right back. Okay, all I've done so far is I've used the detail bit and I've outlined the donkey on both sides. Now, I went ahead and I set up my larger router right here i set up my larger router right here this is the 618 i have a 60 degree v groove bit in there and i have the depth set same way i did by using the wrench now we went back tested it out on a letter for right now this whole project we're winging it just having fun okay 
So the first comment I got off of the forum is, well, you're supposed to do things in like certain steps, blah, 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 blah. You can do whatever the heck you want, okay? This is your sign. If you want to go back and forth with these routers, you can certainly do that, okay? So don't let anybody tell you that. You're having fun, and we'll see. Because I notice the people that are making the comments aren't really ones trying to make signs anyway. Don't be afraid to start. Jump in, do it. You'll have fun. You'll get better as you go along. And actually, the first sign that I did turned out beautifully. So, anyway, jump in, try it. So, back to this. Okay, you're going to see down here, I'll show you in just a sec. When I'm using, when I'm using this big 618 router, and I'm in here and I'm carving, as I get to these edges, a trick I learned off of Dave's forum is I just lift up. This is an exaggeration. But as you come, lift up a little bit, and it'll create that point in your lettering. Now what I do is I go along the outside with that 60 degree bit and I outline my letter all the way along. Then when I come back and I'll start going in circles and I'll carve this out and it'll create those peaks and valleys. Let me show you real quick. All right. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get a close up for you to show you what I mean. Hang on. Okay, and you'll see here this zigzagging circular pattern. I just circle, 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 circle. And it creates these peaks and valleys. And the letters are coming out looking pretty good. Uh, I just saw a question pop up. I got my laptop sitting here off the forum. Hey, well, where did you get your letters? Okay, you can get these in different fonts. Go to uh, Dave and uh, Eric's uh, forum. I'll leave the link here in just a sec as a caption. They sell these in different sizes, small to large. They're reasonably priced. Anyway, this is where I got my letters from, and then I just spray over it with Marsh ink after I got them spaced. But you can do it with tracing paper. I keep telling you that. If you're just starting, you want to keep your costs down, see if you like doing it, use tracing paper, and just use your computer to print out your letters. Okay, now I'm going to go along and do all these letters, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I had this friend of mine go ahead and do the outline of these letters inset like I said with the 60 degree V groove bit and he made an error an oops oh shoot you screwed up now what are we gonna do look at it as an opportunity to fix it a design opportunity okay this letter the M he he whacked it wrong when or cut it wrong rather when he was routering so you can tell from this one to this one but there isn't that big of a difference. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and just take a little tiny bit, just like I did, and you can make it almost unnoticeable. Now, if you are a wood carver of signs and so forth, you'll notice the imperfection. But I can assure you, when we're done, nobody will notice that little hiccup. Okay, it's still got the little peak, just a little different. All the rest of it, he did find it. All the squiggly lines created the peaks and valleys. This looks good. So, the next thing is we are going to go around. These are our pencil marks, which uh, may be a little hard to see right here. And we're going to outline this now. I'm going to use that same 60 degree groove bit. It's just the way we thought we would try the design. We'll see how it works, and we'll go from there. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I did these bordering lines right here, a little wavy, and I'll explain to you, it don't, won't matter, because we're going to do like some clouds in through here. I'll show you in a minute, but what I wanted to concentrate on is this area right here. So I freehanded a little arc and an arc, and I know that I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take all this out. So I'm going to do that real quick, and let's see how that turns out. Remember, we're just playing around and having fun. I'm going to let the friend of mine go ahead and do it, and we'll take a look at it. One moment. Okay, <clears throat> we're back, and what we decided to do is that area up on top there looked just too much area. So we thought, well, we'll get out a couple of stencils, or like I said, you use carbon paper, and we put these two horses, jumping horses, in here, and then traced them out or spray them. I got these little templates from uh, Dave and Eric's site. Anyway, um, trace them or however you want to do it, put them on here. And I went around it with that detail router all the way around and I drew a bordering line up here all the way across. Now I'm going to take out all this area here with uh, the big router going round and round back and forth side to side all that and go all the way around this and then I'll come back. Hold on.
Okay, I kind of stopped in the middle of what I was going to do. I wanted to show you this real quick. One of the things I taught this friend of mine to do, because your tendency with the big routers want to get in there and go crazy, <coughs> I said, so look, after you went around these horses with your detail bit, and come back around it with the big router, slowly, take your time, go slow. This is pine, so it cuts real easy. Come around and outline it with the big router all the way around like this, okay? That way, the character, whatever you have, it's kind of finished. It's, uh, you know, finished routering all around it. Now you can turn around these big areas and you can just go nuts with the router going real quick, real fast, going in circles. Circle, 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 all the way around and you can clean all this out, okay? That's what we're going to do. And I did a long line. This is all freehand. Just take your time, go slow. And again, this is just taking out the bigger part. That way all of this in here you can go fast with the router, but I take my time, I outline everything real well, your project will turn out a lot better. Alright, let me finish this up, I'll be right okay, back. Okay, we're back. Now, I've done all of that circling everywhere, and this is, we're getting close to being done, but not quite. Sometimes you get little ridges in through here, and little pieces of wood that don't look right. And what I would tell you, go to the dollar store, get yourself a pair of reading glasses, about two, two and a half times. Uh, that's what I use. It works good for uh, doing some detail work. So, I've got an ice pick. I got an old chisel. It was bent. I think I somebody threw it out at one of the big box stores. I picked it up and um, I sharpen it and I use it. I got a screw old screwdriver here that I ground at an angle and I sharpened it so it's real sharp. And these are the three tools I primarily use now, and I go in and I do some cleanup work. Let me focus and I'll show you okay. what I mean. Right here you'll see there's this ridge. Maybe you don't want that ridge. It makes it easier when you go to apply any kind of paint or any background color. I just come in like this, and you could use an ice pick. I just take that ridge out, just like that. I go around everything, around this whole sign like that, using the ice pick, the screwdriver, and I go through and I touch everything up the best I can. If I got to use that little detail palm router, I've got it sitting out here, I can go back in and make some cleanup cuts or whatever I want to do. So I'm going to go around the whole thing with these tools. Here's the ice pick, you can do the same thing in through these grooves. Clean everything out, all the debris, because it'll make the painting part of this easier. So any of this detail stuff, you might want to drag it in through there just to loosen up all that debris. What I'll do next is I'll use a broom or a blowgun or a brush and I'll clean this all off and then we'll get ready to add with all the finish. Uh, we'll do some coloring and so forth. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so now I went around and I cleaned it all up with all the little detailing tools or whatever you want to use. Okay, you so don't the have next to step after going around it with the detailing tools or whatever you want to use is we're going to use belt sander. So we'll belt sand the whole thing with 80 grit and go from there. I'll okay, so I went over with the belt sander and of course you're going to go with the grain back and forth all over it. I cleaned it up. I got it down right like this like I want it. Now, before I go to my random orbital sander and I'll go 150-200 on this. I'm sorry, 150-220. I'm going to paint, rather spray, with that marsh ink, the lettering, welcome in here and I might put a little bit of fading around it and then I'll show you we'll play around with some colors and I'll show you some cool ways that you can do to finish this uh, I'm showing a friend of mine I might as well show the people on YouTube hang on okay here what I did is I went around this with some blue painters tape and I'm gonna get out my marsh ink right here marsh and we'll spray these letters You don't need to go to town and go crazy, just little spurts, okay? And remember, we cleaned it off good before we did this. You don't want a lot of debris, then when you do clean it off, it blows it off and you got to re respray it. So it's kind of a pain. You don't want to do that, but you learn as you go. 
So I'll show you my little errors as I've made. So I make sure I've cleaned it off real good. And you say, wow, that looks okay, but let's flip this over. I want to look at it from different angles and you'll see where spots are that you missed with the black. Okay, so you're going to go back over it. I want to make sure I get everything. Alright, just like that. Look pretty good. Alright, this needs to dry. And then I'm going to start my sanding with my random orbital. Okay, and we're going to go 150, 220. It won't take that long because we're only going to do the flat parts. So I'm going to pause this, I'm going to let this dry, and then I'll be back. We'll pick up on it from there. Well, as with all projects, I changed my mind. We were sitting around talking about it, and we have something that we're going to try. <coughs> I'm going to use that marsh ink again. And I'm going to hit all the bordering, but I'm not going to go and make this whole thing black. So I'll show you here. I'm going to outline everything with this, so I'll show you. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put on the black, the ink. The nice thing about this marsh ink is it dries really, really fast. So you're ready to sand within probably 10 minutes, 15, if you really want to let it set up. Now, I didn't cover all this yet. I'll show you why. We're going to sand this down now. We'll go to 150, then we'll do some coloring. So bear with me, and I'll be right back when, as soon as this is dry. Okay, I'm back. So what I did is I decided, rather than 150, I went over this with 80 grit, with the same as the belt sander. Uh, and I didn't take off all the black. I left some of it streaked here and there very lightly. I'm going to blow it off right now, we'll take a look at it, and then we'll decide on the next step. One okay, side. I sanded this to 150 and I pretty much took off all that ink that I wanted on there. So I stood back and I really lightly shot it. So now I'm going to do the 220. So I'll do the 220 and then we'll take a look at it. I'm going to do it very lightly because we're going to apply more color to this and I might have to sand it because of nibs and stuff. So I'll show it to you step by step right now. We're up to the point of just, I've sprayed this very lightly, like I said, with the black, and we'll go from there. I'm letting it dry. I'm going to go over it with 220. I'll be right back. Okay, we got part of that sanding done. I'm letting it dry. While I'm letting it dry, we're going to put a, some cornering on it. Now, remember back on that other video, I showed you the little jig we made, and that's what I'm going to use. Remember back during the first video, I showed you how to make this jig <coughs> right here for your drill press. So it puts corners on it, and I'll show you that here real quick. And I'm going to go around the whole piece and put corners on it. We decided it would look good. put corners like this all the way around it and then we'll be right back. back over to the workshop desk this right here I went ahead with edged it like I told you I created those edges and video one will show you how to make a similar setup for your drill press it's real quick real easy couple of clamps you're good to go then I turn around and I went back and I painted these edges with that same marsh black you can use primer black or whatever you got. I like the marsh. I Whenever I order stuff on Amazon, if I'm out, I go ahead and I order myself a few more cans. Anyway, I went around the whole edge with this. Now I've got that black shadowing again coming over onto all my borders. I'm going to hit it very lightly with that 220 and then I'll show you. We're going to play around and try something new in terms of uh, staining, playing with colors. Give me just a sec. I'm just waiting for this to dry. I'll lightly sand it with my random orbital. And then, uh, well, we'll start the coloring. One moment. Okay, so I lightly hit it with that 220, and now we're ready to add a little bit of color to it. Now, you can wipe it on by hand and spray these, up, uh, these peaks and valleys with whatever you want. 
I have a Badger uh, spray gun. It hooks up to my compressor. They're very inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon. They're very cheap. I think they're like 12, 18 bucks, somewhere in there. And uh, mine came actually with the cord and everything. So it's, anyway, they're a great little item. I'm going to use that just because it's a little quicker. But you can spray it. You can do whatever you want. Remember, it's whatever you want to try. You're having some fun here. So I'm going to bring this around. I'm going to bring this around so you can see it a little bit different angle as I spray it. Okay, so now I have it pointing at this and I'm going to, well, we're going to apply that. This is Ruby Red. I use Trans Tint. In one of these little tiny sprayers, like I have right here, I only put about eight, nine drops. It goes a long way, but the stuff is not cheap. Now if you're starting to run out, of course, you got to fill it back up like I'm going to do right here. I didn't put enough in there before we started shooting. So anyway, let's go back to it. Now I have this mixed with water. Um, I mentioned in one of the other videos, you don't have to. If you use alcohol, it'll dry almost instantly and you're ready to go on to it well, whatever the next phase is, you know, and you're finishing. Now, I'm going to flip it upside down because don't forget, you can miss, especially in these peaks and valleys, and then you're going to get all this white when you go to apply your final top coat finish to it. We'll decide on that in a little bit. I don't worry about the black because it's too dark to matter, and, you know, being black, so you just... That's it. I'm going to pause this. It needs to dry maybe 15, 20 minutes. I should have used alcohol, but I didn't have any handy. So hang on and we'll let it dry and I'll show you what we're okay, going to do next. Okay, time's gone by and I'm going to use my random orbital now. I'm going to hook it up and I'm going to go over this. You can use 220 or 320. It doesn't matter. Why? Because we're going to put a film finish on it when we're done. Um, so 320 would be about the maximum I would go. And I'm going to use the 320 only because the finer the grit, it doesn't aggressively take off that ruby red. I want to take a little bit of it off and I want to get rid of any imperfections or nubs that are on there. So give me one sec and that's what we'll do. That was in real time, okay? So you can see, I did not take very much off of this at all. So I'm going to hit it with my blow gun. Now, I'm going to use yellow. This is a actually trans tint. I'm going to use that little badger spray gun. Let me prop it up. I'll show you what we're going to do. And I'm going to spray yellow now all over it. Okay, I have this set up and I have my badger ready and I have that trans tint in this little badger again. Again, it's about eight to nine drops, something like that. You, you, when you spray it, you'll know if it's too light, add a few more drops, stir it up. I usually do this with alcohol, like I said, but this time around um, I didn't have it, so I mixed it with water. It's just a little bit more waiting time. So I lightly sanded this, like I told you, with the 320. Now we're going to hit it with the yellow.
that's it. And it was in real time. So now we're going to let this dry and then we're going to start building our top finish on it. I'm not going to sand it. I'm not going to do anything else. I sanded it to 320. I hit it with the yellow. That's all I've done. Let it dry now and I'll be right back. Okay, we've let it set now. It's nice and dry. And so what I'm going to put on it. Okay, this is it right here. Rust-Oleum Painters Touch 2 times Ultra Cover Gloss Clear. Uh, it's what they have at the big box. I've tried other things. This, I really like the coverage. It's just as expensive or inexpensive as all the rest of them, well, you know, within a matter of cents. So I use this. So I'm just going to spray this with one coat, let it set, and I'll be right back and we'll go from all right. there. <clears throat> this is like an intermission. While we're waiting for that to dry, um, and I can show you where we're at. I looked at the forum and there was a question on there. You know, well, what else can you do, you know, with a router and what else can you do with little projects, you know, making them around the house and et cetera, something to that effect. Anyway, this is a picture right here. I have a friend that's got like a cabinet shop and he throws out these little squares of wood a lot of times. And so I stop by occasionally, I root through his junk pile. I pulled this one out. This is uh, a wood from Honduras. I think it's some kind of a mahogany from there. It was just a scrap piece and it had some little checks up here and he didn't use it because of that I'm sure. So I brought it home, I routered the edge on it, I squared it up, I routered the edge, I sanded it. This one I sanded up to 320. From one of my other videos you'll see how to make these horseshoes with a coat rack hook. I put it on here, I set a couple of screws in it. And if you just want like one little item in a hallway or a bathroom or I don't know, out in your garage to hang your coat on, this is quick and easy to do. Watch one of my previous videos, you'll see how easy it is to make the horseshoe coat rack. This right here, the wood, I routered it in less than probably one minute. I sanded it for maybe another five, ten minutes. And four dollar can of gloss, which uh, I didn't use the whole can. I sprayed this whole thing. So inexpensive, quick and easy to do, fun little project. Okay, intermission over, let's get back to our wood sun. Okay, so we're back now and this has got four coats on it. I'll probably put one more coat over the whole thing and it's done. And it turned out very nice looking. I don't know, uh, you can experiment around with different color combinations, different techniques. You can hit it with your four and a half inch angle grinder with a sanding disc and put divots and you can hit it with hammers and chains and make it look all rustic and beaten up or you can, excuse me, keep it as simple as you want. Okay, let me look at the forum. Uh, okay, well I already told you I use marsh ink or you can use primer black. Uh, I just kind of like the ink, but um, let me see what else. Uh, trans tint. Well, do a, uh, do a Google search or just look on Amazon for trans tint dyes. They make a whole bunch of different colors. You don't need all of them, of course, just uh, they're a little pricey, but it goes a long ways, lasts a long time. So I like using them, uh, like I said, especially if you, you can tone things, like if you have lacquer and you're using like a little sprayer, you could put like a drop in there and it'll change the color slightly. So you can play around and experiment with your finishes with trans tint. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, answer to the question, no, I'm not going to put a hanging chain on this. He is going to drill little tiny holes in the upper corners where it's a little hidden and drive it into a wooden wall with screws. So, But otherwise, yeah, like on my first video, you can use eye hooks, space them, get yourself a piece of chain, drape it from one side to the other and close up the eye hooks and you'll have a nice hanging sign too. You didn't have to put horses there. You could have put a name. You could have done a whole bunch of different things. We're just goofing around having fun. And uh, the project turned out to be pretty cool. I'm going to take a zoom shot while we're waiting for other questions. Hang on one sec. Okay, this is kind of a zoomed in kind of a shot. I'll see if I can pan it slowly. Uh, the lighting might mess it up, but... Anyway... You get the idea. There's lots of possibilities here, okay? And I sold one of these a while back because I told you like I had a template for it. And uh, you can make money doing this too. Just uh, figure out what people want. Get it onto the wood. And the materials aren't that much. Okay, the other question deals with the cornering. It's just the jig I have set up. 
so I tend to use it quite a bit. People seem to like those cut out on the corners. A lot of times I make them just leave them square. Sometimes I take and I cut like a rounded edge on them and then I just use my belt sander or palm sander. It's up to you. It's whatever you think is going to look good. Um, I always over buy a little bit on the length of the wood so I can uh, take it down as I want to. It's up to you. It's fun. These are your projects. You decide on the colors. Take a look at the stains while you're out at the store. Don't forget about trans tint. I'll do more signs in the future and we'll experiment more with different ways to finish color stain and stuff like that to give you more ideas. But uh, get a router. Look on Craigslist. Get out there and have some fun with it. You'll have a blast doing this. This is the Home Handyman. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. Let me know anything else that you want to see maybe. And we'll see about doing more videos. Thank you very much. You folks have a good day. Bye-bye.